Alright everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Nice Sarius. If you're out here with me today, let's get this video started. So really quick, this is going to be like a guide for beginners. We're not going to be going over anything incredibly in depth here. Like I'm not going to tell you the, the exact formula for consuming or anything. This is going to be um, very general advice, you know, how to consume, what are the best ways to consume, and how to generally get the most damage out of your um, consuming, right? So, like I said, very basic. This is definitely for beginners. If you are a more advanced player, you're probably not going to learn anything out of this video. Like I said, new player, I hope you find this video helpful. Let's go ahead and start the first half of this video, which is, like I said, we're going to be talking about how to actually consume. So, you do not have a way to consume by default. You must go out and acquire a way to consume one way or another. And there are what I would consider to be three primary methods of doing so. The first method is going to be relying on some built-in method that your current Valor Plate of choice has of consuming. For example, Mesa actually has two options for this. She has her third shard, which allows her to consume a fully charged Sundering Slams, and she has her Ascendant, pa uh, Ascendant Passive, which allows her to consume with timing attacks, to consume poison specifically, right? The next method is actually quite simple to get, and it's very convenient if you don't want to uh, sacrifice a gear slot, and that's just simply taking the fifth point of the element skill in the passive tree. So this allows you to consume with Shield Bash and Spinning Blast, which are the third and fifth points in the Shield Attacks skill in the passive tree. So again, this is a really nice, convenient way that it's you don't really have to sacrifice anything to get this, other than using up the skill points for it, right? You know, say if you're playing in a uh, consume build, you're going to be taking these four points anyway, so this is nothing. And, you know, if you just want Shield Bash, this is only two points. Now, Spinning Bast is a little more convenient for consuming, but you can get away with this by only spending four points total. Uh, you know, if you weren't going to take Petrifying Slam already. That said, the last method is going to be through Cursed uh, slash Awakened gear from Lightbringer. The first of which, and the primary of which, uh, what I'll get into it in a second, is the Heavenly Reversal Awakened Legendary Ring. Uh, it may not be legendary by default, I don't remember. Uh, but the, the Heavenly Reversal Ring from Lightbringer, right? So this allows your timing attacks to consume, and they do some bonus damage, right? So, uh, and the other piece of gear that allows you to do this is to, is the Diamond Charm, which allows you to consume with charged heavies, and again, they deal some bonus damage. Uh, most people don't use this because the charm slot is very competitive. It's very, very hard to compete with Lion Talisman right now. And even after Beetle Talisman is nerfed, um, the Lion Talisman is still so incredibly dominant. That it's kind of hard to um, really justify using um, your charm slot to get the ability to consume with Charged Heavies. Especially since Charged Heavies are generally pretty slow and generally not considered a very good way to consume. You know, by most people. Obviously, if you like it, you like it for free. Uh, now, that said, that's pretty much it. That's all the ways to consume. Again, just to reiterate, you've got built-in methods on your battle plate. You've got the helmet's passive skill in your passive tree. And you've got the two pieces of curse gear from Lightbringer. And that is it. Now, this next bit, I'm just going to talk about my preferred methods of consuming. Um, these are what I would generally consider the most convenient, most accessible, and... Um, Again, just most convenient ways of consuming, most effective ways of consuming. That said, I'm not saying like you have to use this method of consuming for these pieces of weapons. And it does depend on the weapon you're using, in my opinion, which way you want to consume. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it. I've gone on long enough about that. So generally, if I'm using Longsword, I'm using Dual Blaze, or I'm using Warhammer, I'm using timing attacks to consume. This is because all these weapons have weapon um, timing attacks that I think are just good for consuming. You know, Longsword, for example, I just messed it up has the um, the AoE slam attack after Northern Technique and Southern Technique with the less quick or with the light timing attack, right? Dual Blades has the spinning, um, again, light timing attack after um, storing any regular attack. Like that. And Warhammer also has an invulnerable timing attack that it can use. because this is normal and those are the methods I like to use to consume now that said if I'm using polearm or I'm using warhammer or greatsword if I'm using polearm or greatsword 
I'm usually using Shield Bash to consume. Just because I don't like uh, their timing attacks. And you know, generally the primary method of consuming is typically considered to be timing attacks. This is because um, you know, up until this update, the only method of consuming was the Heavenly Reversal Ring or the Diamond Charm. And again, most people would simply don't like using charged heavies. Uh, so pretty much everyone was using Heavenly Reversal to consume with timing attacks. And you know, generally that is still the case that people are using timing attacks to consume. Now that said, Shield Bash is great. I really love this because this is honestly one of my favorite additions to the Exalted update. This is a great way to just have a backup method to consume in an emergency or, you know, just, just to have it, right? There's no reason to um, feel bad about having a backup method to consume if you really want to. It's entirely up to you. Um, and that's it. Uh, again, this is personal preference. And you know, now that we've kind of gone through all of that, Let's talk, we talk about how to optimize your consume damage, you know, in the general sense. There are going to be exceptions, but let's go ahead and talk about it. So the way consume damage works is kind of weird, and no one would blame you for not understanding how it works immediately. Uh, luckily, it's actually pretty simple under the hood. Uh, to simplify it, your consume damage does the total amount of damage that your elements would have done if they were left to play out on their own, if they were left to deal damage naturally over time. For example, as you see, I've applied some elements to him, and he's now taking tick damage. If I consume that damage, essentially the rest of the damage you would have taken gets applied immediately. This does mean that the more elements you apply, the more damage you will deal with consume. Just to show you, you know, this time I've got two Northern Techniques worth of elements on him, and now he takes, you know, about double the damage. Just keep that in mind. Now, essentially, the more elements that you stack up, the more you will do when you finally consume them. And it is the total amount of damage you would have dealt if those were left to play out on their own. Now, the way you uh, optimize this damage is thankfully pretty simple. Um, so basically, you just get as much element power and duration as you can, and you get them as even as you can. Uh, I don't know how well you can see this, but I have currently have 260 prow, uh, 260 percent duration and 360 percent power. You might be wondering why I have such a dis discrepancy there, you know, 100 percent difference. But if you're a newer player, you might not be aware of this. That the augments like this, like the Azure Fang, where it lists specifically, you know, element element duration and element power, things like that, aren't reflected in your stat sheet in these general element power and duration numbers. So my actual element duration is 362%, and my actual element power is 334%. Much closer, right? Just keep that in mind. So again, as much as you can get, and as even as you can get them. Just to be perfectly clear, element power and duration will outvalue any other substat you can get on an augment for your consumed damage. You know, more so than, for example, for, for in this case, more than earth damage, more than like damage to poisoned enemies element power and duration will outvalue all of these stats and that's because element power and duration essentially end up multiplying with each other this is also why you want them to be as even as you can get them because they're multipliers and uh, some basic math will tell you that the closer the two multipliers are uh, the more it will deal if you're trading them off evenly right uh, and that's pretty much it that's really all you need to know again as much as you can get as even as you can get them, and it is your absolute primary, um, and it, the element power and duration is your priority for your substats for consume damage. Now there are exceptions on aiming for these to be as even as possible, but that's kind of beyond the realms of what a new player should be worried about, and it's not really going to hurt you just to, to just aim for even element stats. So I wouldn't worry about it if you're a new player. You can worry about that once you start getting into more advanced and you start making optimized builds. That said, again, that's pretty much all you need to know about consuming. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will catch you guys in the next one.